There is a saying out there, and it's attributed to Winston Churchill during the Second World War, and it's the saying that you've heard over and over again, and it's never, never, never give up. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide, your host and the Appraiser Coach. Justin Harris. I want to begin by telling you, uh, <laughs> I've probably told you this before, but reminding you, I am not a sports guy. I tried every sport out there when I was in high school. I think I kind of did it because that was the thing that guys had to do, right? In order to fit in, I, I did everything. I did tennis, I did swimming, I did baseball, basketball, football, wrestling, what am I missing? I mean, I did it all. I really did. Now, I was not good at any of them. So maybe that's one of the reasons I've not really attached myself and, and, and found a love for sports. Though I do every once in a while love to attend a game. Uh, I might uh, drive down with my spouse and attend a, a jazz game maybe once a year in Salt Lake. You know, I, I love, we've got a local minor team here, uh, baseball, and I think, you know, at least every other year we attend a game just for fun, just to get out. High school is fun. I actually enjoy high school sports a lot more than I enjoy the college or, or the professional teams. I, I think it's just fun to watch up and coming individuals who are just kind of learning the sport and, uh, and, and see how they do against others that are also just kind of learning the sport. But I, I set all that up to tell you that, you know, <laughs> don't laugh at me today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a sports analogy. I may get some terms wrong. You know, I, I'm, I'm wise enough to know that in basketball, you get a touchdown and in football, you get a basket. But other than that, I don't really know much about sports. I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies that I do know very well. One of them being OREP Insurance. Of course, OREP is my e and insurance. When I say my e and insurance, I mean this is the company that I choose to go with. There's a reason for that, and I'm going to tell you about it in just a minute. OREP.org is where you find out more. O-R-E-P.org. Data Master USA is where you find a company that will allow you to save 45 minutes per report on average. That's every report, folks. If you're doing the kind of volume that I'm doing in my office, that is a big, big deal. Not only do they save you time, but they also make you a, a, a higher quality appraiser. Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com. Again, it's datamasterusa.com. And finally, we are sponsored by Alamode. Alamode, of course, is the company that I have been using for a long, long, long time and I will continue to use because they, well, they kick butt. Let's just put it that way. Alamode.com or 800 Alamode. All right, folks, I'm going to tell you a true story. Um, and, and by the way, I, I grew up in a very, um, well, I grew up in two small communities in eastern Idaho. One of them, Blackfoot, Idaho. <laughs> That's where I spent most of my growing up. I've got a lot of fond memories and a lot of not so fond memories uh, growing up because, hey, I was an awkward kid. And, you know, let's just say that uh, life wasn't always peachy keen for a uh, seventh grader in Blackfoot, Idaho. But that's where I grew up, and uh, the, the small town is kind of where I feel comfortable, right? Uh, my sophomore, at the end of my sophomore year, the summer be between my sophomore and junior years, I moved to Rigby, Idaho. It's a, it's a town just a little north of Idaho Falls, a little south of Rexburg. And uh, Rigby High School uh, is where I graduated, 1993. There you go. Now you, know, now you know how old I am. I was old for my grade. I'm 45 as of this recording. And I, I mean, I, to say that I loved it is probably not true. Um, I was not a big fan of high school. I certainly have never been a big fan of standardized schooling. Okay, even my college. I, I have a master's degree, and I'm telling you that I, I learned squat in in college, both for my bachelor's and my master's. I, I I did it for the piece of paper. Now, part of that's my fault, right? And not to get too far off in the trees, but I think you get out of something what you put into something, and I certainly did not put into schooling what I should have, right? But one of the things I loved as, well, I liked 
as a as a high school student was to go to the games on Friday night to attend the football games, the basketball games. Uh, went on many dates to the games and and just hang out with my friends there. It's just fun. Again, I'm not a big sports person, but I I, I enjoy the the rivalry. I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the you know sitting in the in the stands with your fans and, and cheering for your team. It's fun, right? It's fun. And I, I you know and once I graduated, I said I, never again am I going to live here. I'm going to move away. I'm going to I'm going to you know experience the world. And you know I moved to Southern California for a while. I moved to Northern Utah for a while. Ended up kind of just making my way back. And now guess what? About ten years ago, my wife and I moved back to our hometown where our parents still live. <laughs> okay, and we live literally five minutes from each parent. And it's not bad. It's not bad. I'll tell you that it's fun sometimes to, to go back to the games. And even though I may not know everybody that's playing, uh, usually my neighbors are playing in the game. My, my neighbor's kids are playing in the game. It's kind of fun. Okay. Well, this year, this year, Rigby, Idaho, Rigby High School went to the state tournament for football for the first time ever. This is a 5A state football game. Okay. The first time ever, ever, ever in their history. Okay, kind of cool, kind of cool. Now I was out of town, uh, and this and this particular game was uh, actually up in Moscow, Idaho, which is about a six seven hour drive from where I'm at. Uh, so I did not attend the game uh, personally, but I did get on the feed on the internet and I watched a lot of the game. Now <clears throat> stick with me here. This is this is kind of an interesting situation. Okay, so I watched the game and. Uh, you know, there was actually a pretty good chance that, that Rigby could win this one. They were playing Coeur d'Alene, um, and don't try to spell that. And they, uh, they had a pretty good chance of winning. Now, Coeur d'Alene was the only team that beat Rigby in the whole football season. So they were undefeated except one game, and that was their game with Coeur d'Alene. So you can imagine this is, you know, this is a, this is a pretty cool game, right? This is a, a good lead up, right? And I'm watching the game on the internet with my kids. And then we had to go to a program, okay? So my wife was uh, putting on a program. She teaches youth, and there was a, an activity that the youth were involved in, and uh, she needed some help setting it up and different things. So we were, at, at this point, we were, I think it was about three and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, okay? They have quarters in football, right? Um, there's about three and a half minutes. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. There was about three and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, and Rigby was down by 15, okay? It was over. It was over, right? The game was over. In fact, I remember when that last touchdown was made by the Coeur d'Alene team, I said, well, that's it. That's the game, right? And my kids kind of looked at me and said, there's no way. There's three and a half minutes left, and there's eight points. Now, this tells you how much I know about, about football. I had completely forgot. Now, I know that some of you are members of my All-Star team, right? And you get the newsletter, the playbook, once a month, and you think that I'm a big sports fan, right? And and the the sections in that playbook are named after sports things, like the two point conversion, right? But um bum. I have a two point conversion that I write and put out every single month. But I forgot about the two point conversion in the actual game. I'm looking at my kids. I'm like, they could get two foot, even if if by some miracle, they got two uh, touchdowns and the extra point. They're still down by one ain't happening. It's over, right? Not thinking about the two-point conversion. So I left. I went and did my thing. Now, my friend, my buddy, drove with his family seven hours north and attended the game, okay? So he's there, and throughout the game, he's kind of texting me different things. Well, I had not heard from him in about an hour, right? And I'm at this presentation that my wife's putting on, and I get this text from Adam, and it says, wow, four exclamation points. Now, okay, my thought is he drove seven hours. He was debating whether to even do it. He didn't have any kids playing. He just knew some kids that were going to be there, right, his nephew and some neighbor kids. And, and, and I, so I immediately thought, wow means, wow, I drove seven hours to attend a game, and we got screwed. We got robbed, right? And so I wrote back, and I said, yeah, too bad. And about 10 seconds later, another text came back, and he said, um, did you turn it off before the end of the game? And I said, no way. <laughs> there is no way. I said, don't ruin it for me, but did they win? And he said, in double overtime. Now, folks, let me tell you what happened, okay? The entire game, Rigby is down 
the entire game. They're either tied or down. They were never, ever ahead, if I remember correctly, at least according to the, to the scoreboard. The entire game. But they never, ever yielded. They never yielded. Now, they tied it up. Now, by the way, after the presentation, I went back home and I watched the replay. I couldn't avoid it. I mean, it was insanely cool. They tied it up with four seconds to go. And I'm talking, there was four seconds on the, on the clock and they have one more play and they're still down by eight, okay? And they get the touchdown and they get the extra two points and they tied it up. They went into double overtime and they ended up winning the game against Coeur d'Alene for the first time in Rigby High School uh, history. Absolutely an incredible electrifying game. It was awesome. And again, I'm not a sports fan, but this game, even though I knew the outcome was fun to watch, right? You ever watched a game that you know the outcome? <laughs> it's a recorded game. And you know what's happening. And you're just like, okay, I, I already know there. I mean, you don't even get excited, right? I was super excited. This is a super cool game. Folks, I'm telling you, I don't think I can overemphasize this. They came from what I would call an impossible. Remember, I turned off the game three and a half minutes left. I turned it off because there's no way in hell they're going to win this thing. And yet they came back in double overtime to win the game. I want to pause here and remind you we're sponsored by Data Master. Data Master is the place that you need to go, datamasterusa.com, if you want to learn how to save, oh, about 45 minutes per report. Now, it's not in every MLS area, so you need to check that out first. Go to datamasterusa.com and look on their map and find out if they are in your area. Folks, I'm telling you it is a no-brainer. If you click on that map and you drill down into the MLS that you're using and Data Master is in that area, what are you waiting for? Datamasterusa.com saves you 45 minutes per report because it takes all the typing out of the transfer of the comps and the subject and the MC sheet and a lot of other things. Check them out, datamasterusa.com, datamasterusa.com. Alamode.com is where I go to find out more about a great software that I've been using for over two decades. They've been servicing appraisers for over three decades. This is the software that allows you to be able to save time, money, energy, efficiency. It's alamode.com. If you're using any other form-filling software out there, folks, I, I plead with you, check them out. Pick up the phone. Okay, call all mode. You will talk to a live representative, okay, if it's business hours, and you can just ask him, hey, I'm with such and such company. What can you do that they can't? They'll be able to answer that question and you'll be able to switch. Allamode.com or 800 Allamode. Finally, we are sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP, of course, is the uh, ENO that I've been using for many, many years. Uh, it was a hard switch for me, folks. I'd been with another company for a very long time. I'd gained a relationship with them. Um, never again. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you that OREP is awesome. The benefits that they give their, their members is huge. All you have to do is go to OREP.org, okay? First of all, check out their insurance. That's the reason you're going to be a customer, right? The insurance. But the reason you're going to stay a customer is all the benefits. Check out the benefits tab and just browse for just a few minutes on all the things that Alamode gives you. We're talking about discounts. We're talking about education. We're talking about free CE. We're talking about a lot of different things that OREP gives you. They're a great, great company. It's OREP.org. That's O-R-E-P dot org. All right, folks, we are back. Uh, we're talking about, uh, well, we've been talking about sports a little bit, and maybe some of you are chuckling because Dustin Harris is talking about sports. But nonetheless, had an opportunity virtually to attend a game from my high school, alma mater, rather, and it was awesome. For the first time ever, Rigby High School won uh, the state championship. For the first time ever, they went to the state championship in football. And for the first time ever, they won that state championship. It was a super, super cool game. It was a game that they could not, should not have won. Okay. With three and a half minutes left at the time I turned it off and went on to another activity, it was an impossible game. Now, I made a mistake and I gave up before it was over. Okay. There is a saying out there and it's attributed to Winston Churchill during the Second World War. And it's the saying that you've heard over and over again, and it's never, never, never give up. 
folks, I mean, I can tell you there's a lot of times in my life that I wanted to give up. Where are you with your business? Where are you with your life? How many of you are in a pickle, if you will? Uh, that's, of course, a shout out to uh, Mark Skapinitz. Hi, Mark. <laughs> uh, some of you may know what I'm talking about. How many of you are in a pickle when it comes to your appraisal business? How many of you want to get out of that pickle? Now, my question, how many of you are in a situation where you feel you just don't really have much of a choice at this point? In other words, you feel stuck. You feel like it's impossible to ever make the kind of money that you want to make as an appraiser, to ever do the types of things that you want to do as an appraiser. Uh, Folks, I can tell you that in 2010, now, in 2010, the housing bubble was just barely starting to hit Idaho. I know, every one of you is saying, well, what about 2008? Yeah, in 2008, it hit places like Phoenix. It hit places like Las Vegas, Southern California, and Florida, and some other big areas, right? It took about two years before it actually rolled over and started hitting hard in Idaho. We had some time to prepare. Now, I'm embarrassed to admit that I didn't think it would ever hit Idaho. Frankly, I thought we were a little bit immune uh, because we had not seen the, the rises as quickly as some of these other areas, I didn't think that we would, we would have that quote-unquote bubble pop, right? And I may even made some predictions that came out to be wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit that. Um, and I've talked about that here on this microphone before. But the point is, is in 2010, it kind of hit us hard, and then the HVCC came, right? And uh, I had to make some major changes in my business model. And I'll be honest with you, folks. Sometimes I get on this microphone or I get on my coaching calls or I talk to my, you know, my mastermind group and I'll, I'll say things like, you know, I kind of saw it coming. I kind of prepared and I was able to, to roll over and change my business model. And, and I actually did better in 2011 than I did in 2009. Right. In other words, I was able to actually do better with the changes than I. A lot of my appraiser friends were going out of business. My colleagues, my peers were going out of business, and yet we were able to thrive. And that is all true, absolutely true. But what I don't sometimes talk about is the days that I couldn't sleep at night because I knew that I had to let some people go. The days that I didn't sleep at night because I knew that I was in big, big trouble. The days that I lamented to my significant other and said, I don't know what we're going to do. This is a big, big deal. Like, I, I'm thinking about changing careers. I'm thinking about doing things completely different. We're, we're really going to have to tighten the purse strings for a while. And, and we had to do that, folks. That was, that was my three and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter moment. And it seemed impossible. And it was at those times that I decided that I was not going to give up. It was at those times that I decided that I was going to make some changes that were dramatic, that were drastic, that made all the difference in the world. Now, many of you are coming off a very good year in 2019. Many of you are coming off a record-breaking year in 2019. I know we did. We had a huge year in 2019. My question is, what does 2020 look for you? Do you feel like you are down by 15 points with three and a half minutes or down by eight with four seconds left. I can tell you from personal experience that it's not over. The game is not over. You can go into overtime. You can go into double overtime. You can still win this thing. By the way, I didn't tell you the rest of the story. At the end of double overtime, they had just made a touchdown, and they were down by one point. Rigby was down by one point. So now the question is, do we kick the field goal and tie it up and go into a third overtime? Or do we say, screw it, we're going to run it into the end zone, do another two-point conversion, and win this thing and be done with it? (laughs) Well, you can guess what they did because I told you there was only double overtime. What an awesome game. And what an awesome career that we are in as appraisers. Always change. That's one of the reasons I love what I'm in. I'm not sitting on an assembly line day after day, putting a a nut on a bolt. Every day is different. Every day is new. Change is good. Change allows me to change and to become better and to reach within myself and pull out what it is that I can be. I challenge you this year, 2020, make this a better year than 2019. Don't, don't, don't get in this situation where you say, well, 2019 was so awesome. There's no way I can beat that. Folks, that's defeatist. That's three and a half minutes left 
and you're down by 15. You can win this thing. You can kick some butt. Okay, I'll be there with you through 2020. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for being a part of this podcast. We're going up on five years, five years that we've been doing this. Thank you for being a part of it. And we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.